Hi, I'm the Magpie, and I have no idea how to start this video, but I, I know roughly where I wanted to end. <laughs> with you. It all started with me watching this latest Jameson Nathan Jones video. I'm realizing now that's not at all a flattering <laughs> place to have it. Uh -huh. Music producers got this backwards. Do less, come out better. And I can really recommend it. It's linked in the description. You should go subscribe and all of that social media nonsense. But uh, yeah, it's very focused on limitations and less is more-esque type things. And I'm intending to do a separate video on the entire subject of less is more because I have such beef with less is more. So that's gonna be a way more controversial video. It's something that we have talked at length about in the podcast, which is also linked in the description. Almost viral, it sort of pops up in, yeah. But there is an aspect of limitations that I feel is so overlooked and he kind of touches on it with this amazing pause screen that I was able to do. Virtuosity can be a hindrance. And then he talks like about this that. This idea of less movement often equating to stronger ideas took a lot of getting used to because all of my years in piano had taught me to value technical ability above all else. And then he just, you know, shows <laughs> how great he is. But yeah, I feel like it's a very human thing to focus on technical ability and expertise and we like to throw around the word talent as if it's some sort of magical quality that some people are just born with because I think that more often than not here you have to correct me if I'm wrong you can do it in the comments and yeah it, it's just fascinating to me but in like countless conversations with professional musicians uh, particularly ones that are experts in their respective fields so being like a pro guitarist or a pro pianist or a pro there is potential for shame in playing instruments that are out of their comfort zone they are reluctant to do it and i feel like this is also a big part of how we sort of portray ourselves as artists and creative people in reference to others simply put we have this constant focus on our qualities and we want to shove all of our weaknesses under a rug. And then in regards to specifically producing music and making your own music, I believe that weaknesses are like the ultimate limitation to lean into. I express so much with the limitations of what I am bad at doing. I have all of these instruments you see here in frame and I can't play any of them. And it just adds so much to the personality of my music that I, instead of going into the computer and programming a violin melody, I sit and I play the violin. And I cannot overstate <laughs> how bad I am. Okay, I'm not that bad. <laughs> but yeah, what I think it boils down to is that comfort zones are simply extremely comfortable. The better you become at an instrument, the more likely you are to be comfortable playing with that instrument. And the, the, like, the leap to move over to playing something where you're a complete noob, that leap just like it grows more and more and more and at some point you end up when you are producing music only humanly playing the instrument where you're comfortable and then programming all of the rest because the tools that are at hand at the moment and they're only gonna get better with uh, <laughs> yeah future technologies they are so immensely powerful that it's really really easy to just do everything in your DAW. Or actually with hardware synthesizers and stuff like that also. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it or anything like that. You should simply do what you feel like doing 
uh, as far as expressing yourself and, and making art. But it becomes this very strange dynamic when the tools are powerful enough to sort of negate all of the virtuosity that humans are ever able to accomplish on, on any given instrument and we, we still like to really really praise that and I, I do too uh, it's less interesting to me but I really can appreciate like the, 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 the skill but specifically in the realm of music production I think that perfect is like the killer of personal and when I listen to music and when I make music I 100% lean into personal. I want to surprise the listener and I want to be surprised with what's happening and the best way for me to accomplish that is to play all of the instruments that I have no idea how to play. And I would assume that if I do a poll now, what's more important in music? Question mark. Perfect or personal? I'm gonna assume that it's gonna be like 100% are gonna say personal. And still, when we do value judgment, like when we comment on other people's artistic output or whatever, we value perfect so much higher in the context of like a conversation. Oh, that artist is so great. And did you hear that sound they played? <laughs> and we watched these virtuoso musicians with big eyes and we appreciate the photorealistic paintings so much which is truly fascinating to me because if we then <laughs> when we sit back and we think about it we express that we believe that personal is so much more important what then is personal i would argue that it's all of the things that I can only do well and awful. And it makes me a bit sad that people can feel so vulnerable, let's say, uh, in a social context in regards to making sounds with a thing that is not the thing that you have, let's say, practiced for a long time at making sounds with. I would like to advocate for a more childlike appreciation of making sounds and playing around with these tools slash toys slash instruments that all have their unique characteristics. And to tie this back to us together as creative people uh, and makers of sounds, I truly believe in the power of just doing because we're getting to a point where we can input prompt into an AI and it can generate literally what we want right now. I believe that music is essentially going to stop being this consumer based market where yeah there's a fuck ton of money in. and instead we're gonna have algorithms where we can input a prompt and it creates literally the type of music because it knows you. You know, and it, it creates it for right here, right now. Like right now, I want Joe Rogan singing smooth jazz with Christmas lyrics with a sparkle of dubstep in there. And then it just creates that because I wanted that for when I was cooking a lasagna. So the art of making art <laughs> and, and making music is gonna be something where we are just constantly amazed by in a smaller setting, this is what I did. Oh, fun, this is what I did. Like it's gonna be this complete democratization of creativity, P potentially. Like that's the utopian view on it, I would say. I feel like I'm becoming a bit rambling. I'm not even sure that I got my point across. So I think instead I'm going to prove my point. And point being, just to reiterate that when producing music, your limitations is your greatest strength. So I'm gonna start a project using only things that I have no idea how to play, but with the power of music production tools, it's really easy to have fun and make something great. So I think that the mu music production part of this rambling thing is very important and necessary.
because there's a lot of strength in the things that you can have the computer doing. The contrast of poorly playing an instrument with something that is very rigid on the grid and computer-esque perfect, that contrast is really powerful. And it's something that I do constantly in my music, which you can also check out through a link in the description. Just released an album, kind of a one. So yeah, let's start with something cool. So I have a start. Kind of cool. Should probably make a video on this one in the future in its entirety. Well, yeah. Well, right now, I've just started a fresh Cubase project. And I think what I want to do with this one is do like a rhythm. Oh. Then why not play a brand new instrument that I just got? Okay, with a little bit of studio magic, now I have this. I don't know why I'm looping it three times. Now I want to contextualize it, because it's goddamn weird at the moment. I'm an awful keyboard player, but uh, I can't put down chords. So... Let's try some bass. And I'm an awful bass player, so that's perfect. Ah. Now, here we go. Together with that shitty bass playing, I'm just gonna put in another bass sound. Cause why not? So I've played a handful of instruments now that one might argue I have no place to be playing. But I already feel like it's becoming something. You know? Like... I haven't even done any real mixing or anything, I'm just, you know... Having this now, this is like ultra cute and personal, like it really didn't have to be, but now it kinda is. But if I start adding computer sounds now, I can make it grow even more, although it necessarily doesn't have to. But I'm gonna pick like a drum... <laughs>
Okay. Yeah. Like it's gonna be big there. Doing some layers. I don't mind swimming against the current. I'm not looking for the sea. I don't know. No, I'm more interested in what's ahead of where I'm swimming currently. Ah. Yeah, uh, yeah, you get what I mean. Anyways, I'm not gonna continue now. I'm gonna end it here. Uh, this was basically just to say down that part because now I'm getting really inspired. Also, I can say that I can save down all of these sounds except my vocals, but I can save down all of them and, and put it on the Patreon. Because this is very much just a started thing and since everything I release is in any case CC BY, so it's all sampleable and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna render all of these sounds and put them on Patreon, so there's a Patreon link in the description and you can do whatever you want with it. You can do that big part. Send it back to me. And then we essentially make this song together. Yeah.